mean, there's one bench that can be built, it can be painted, and it would pretty much take care of uh, that issue. Okay. So I'm just saying that we put it real low, but I don't mind actually sometimes when the next couple months doing that if we talk in the meeting. Okay. You know, we'll make it official and everything. When I was down there, I was like, you know, it's a little run down, but one of the benches is still looking solid. Okay. And then there's another one that's partly solid, and then the other one's completely gone. But the only concern I have is it almost looks like someone's been spending a lot of time down there. I mean, like, there's a couple of bags hanging there. Yeah. It's got like garbage that maybe someone's been spending a lot of time. I don't know. I don't go by them much. Okay. I'll have to pay more attention to maybe someone's. I did notice that at one point there was like a bike chain to the fence. So, um, but which, I don't know. Maybe no, someone, maybe nothing. Maybe someone picked up and just got garbage bags on the fence. Yeah. There are, <clears throat> there is a homeless guy that I found sleeping. Um, at, down at a refinery, so there could be homeless people as well. Yeah, yeah. Pretty low fire. I agree. Okay. So, do we want to put numbers in these categories, or do we want to just we we can alternatively decide to put it on the select board agenda and remove it from this? I, I don't know how you want to. I think that's probably where it belongs. This is not really. You know, we know how we can think about doing it too. We can start if we wanted to with everything that do, does with financial. And get on the list and get like federal COVID, um, financial policies, or we can just go by uh, what we think is important for the town of Woods Run. I would argue that's important for a lot of town residents. So I'm just throwing out some ideas right now. I know because the priorities kind of become relative. Exactly. Right. Um, I think maybe we should go through and identify the ones first, what we feel are the ones. Okay, problems. that's fair. All right. Um, and that'll help us kind of figure out. Do you want to go like one through four? Um, four I would just say, like, for example, um, Woods Run, to me, is a one. Yeah, I agree. And we're just doing this column right now, is that right? Um, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the COVID relief funds are probably a one because we have a deadline of August 18th. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I would probably be like a two because it's important, but it's not that big. So it's, uh, I'm sorry, what was that? Which one? Thanks. What's going on? Highway is like maybe a two right now. Uh, Broke Plan, I think, is a one, personally, um, because I feel like George is waiting. He is waiting, but I just want to caution you that that's. So, I agree, we need to talk about it, right? It's just not going to happen in the next two weeks. No. It, <laughs> okay, so are we looking at kind of the, the, a window of time that we want to prioritize for? Like the next month? So I, I guess my point is everything can't be a one right. because <laughs> it will um, end up with, a, you know, we should pick like one. four or five ones. Yeah. You know, everything else we've got to go to two and then go to three maybe. So, Paul, I'm sorry, I missed No, I was going to say highway. Oh, was I, it this one, the Main Street parking? Yeah, but okay. we, can, we can talk about that. I don't think we can Yeah, I wouldn't call that. I mean, that's that's good an action that we're waiting on. Um, right. So, yeah. and then, yeah, that was nice. Everything budget and budget to see what we want. Yeah, need and to be one. That's yes. probably. Um, what else is time sensitive, Kevin? Well, let's also look oh, at the rest of the list here. Sorry. Um, yeah, so let's just, I, you know, there, there is more, so maybe we look at the first call, like go all the way down. Yeah and look at all these things. Um, the tax collector compensation policy is time sensitive along with the budget because that would be for town meeting. Um, other than that, whatever's town meeting related um, or that you think you might want to consider for town meeting, I would consider more of a priority than other items. Although, um, yeah, just because you have a timeline on, on those things. Do we have a timeline? Time 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 yeah, there's really, you know, no timeline on that, just the board's will. You can continue to do one-year extensions on it, so it's not a really urgent issue. Okay. Um, I think, oh, you know what's not on here? Um, communication. Uh, virtual hybrid meetings, I feel like that's a one. So I put that, we can, um, we can rephrase this, but that's 
what I meant by um, technology in the conference room. So, yeah, technology in the conference room. That's what I meant by that. So I think it's more than that. Though. I think communication overall, besides just like having the ability to do hybrid and virtual meetings, um, there were some things in my document. Did you see the bottom of um, Miles's document? I added a fun list of things. I didn't see that. In the shared document. I actually, I'm going to because I, I, I hope you do because I, I thought I integrated all the things that were in that document. Um, Did I need to do something to make them visible to everyone? I don't well, know. I, or I, maybe I, you shared it before she added. Well, but then I still would have seen he things. He did share so. it first, but then and I added some stuff, but I kind of figured someone would review it before we came to this meeting. Well, right, and I and I did. I I created this on Friday. Not quite on standing on priorities, but standing on priorities, right? Yes. Yeah, right, you can open that. Well, I, I can, but I'm going to make my whole screen pop up when I do it. So, <laughs> um, let's, let's, we can. So this is what I was. Yep. Um, oh, maybe it's down. Oh, I totally. <laughs> Aha! Look at that. Okay. Thank you for that. I'm sorry. That's okay. So right at the top, I mentioned communication improvements. Okay. Um, and then underneath was hybrid virtual meetings. Okay. So I have the website listed separately. Yep. Um, Facebook email, I'm not sure what you, like, are you talking about policies about how they're used? Um, well, we've had um, people complaining about the meetings not being well described. Uh, actually, that was one of the big things I heard in the Highway Committee uh, Safety Committee meeting, too. The meetings aren't well described, and, you know, people have asked about, I mentioned to you, agendas um, being available. Which they are now, by the way. Okay, great. Um, so just kind of a review of maybe a few minor things we can do to improve communications um, I thought was pretty high priority as well. And, and you know, that just will encourage people to come to the meetings um, and then have a meeting separately. I, I don't, I don't, I, I guess I'm trying to figure out how to, um, so, so town website is kind of its own bubble of stuff. Um, and, and we can certainly talk about how to put more information there. Um, meeting schedules with proposed agendas. So the agendas are now publicly available. Ownership of communication mediums. Right. Um, um, it would be good for us to understand who owns and who's responsible for them so we can try to um, figure out how to take some steps to um, work with those people to improve what so, we're sending out for information. So Facebook pages are put out by the department heads. Otherwise, so we had a town one, though. which is which is just an extension of the website essentially. So the volunteer who does the website and there's a post, she puts it out on the official town Facebook page that's supposed to comments. So, so that's it. I'm just saying. That so I we think, can. I think we need to go over it. Well, okay. So I guess I'm just looking. Meeting. Well, yeah. no, no, no. I, I, oh. I guess I'm just trying to. Oh, I deleted something. Um, um, I'm just trying to figure out how should we articulate that here. Um, communication improvements. Yeah, is all. I think we, I think you can. Cover all right. Them. So just high level um, communication improvements. All right. Okay. And what would you be want to rank that? Um, I personally think it's important, so I would say that's important. I mean, just a review. I don't think it floats to that. Just ranked against the other things. Mm -hmm. True. I mean, someone's also going to work on this stuff. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Um, I, I would call it a two. Okay. I'm okay with two, but I, I can't see that as as much of a um, okay. work and effort to get it going. I'd be happy to you know, work with 
whoever um, is part of that effort. Um, whoever the, is responsible for the different meetings. Um, I think the technology in the conference room um, it needs to be clarified a bit because it's more than just technology. I think it's actually you know, planning the meetings, the private meetings. Um, so just so it's clearer, they were perfect. I'm losing my header, so I'll fix the call once later. But at least it's there. I'm going to um, rate that as one because I think that's a pretty easy to. to well, so problem. so like let's just review though the columns because the priority is is not to consider how much it costs or how easy it is, but just how important it is, and then separately you can talk about how expensive or how easy it is. Maybe right. it, so if it's not an HR, you know, if, if the HR costs, you know, if it takes 10 minutes to complete, but it's really a five on the importance scale, you might still, at the end of this session, decide to do it just because it's going to take 10 minutes. And even though it's not a super priority, it's easy. That, I guess that's how I would suggest that you use rent. So we're going through this first column looking for ones and twos, I think is... What's the, um, the old mill lane bridge? What is the, uh, the work around that and the deadlines? Um, that's a really <coughs> good question. It's a temporary bridge, so it has a lifespan. I don't know offhand what it is. We are, um, it's a red listed... Um, I was going to say 20 years or 10 years into it. That sounds more correct to me. Walk which down, it's on the city. I've been walking down that road and it seems about 10 years ago. Yeah. It um, it is on the CIP. It's but also I think it's like 2029. It's, it's yeah, also on the the state's red listed road uh, um, bridge list, which means it's deficient and needs to be addressed to state standards. But also that there's funding available. We're on the funding list. Funding used to be 10 years out with the state, now it seems to be more than that, but the state would pay for 80% of it if we did it up to a certain level, but then George has a vendor that he thinks he could, could provide a, a different kind of bridge for much less, but how does that relate to the 20% cost of doing it to state standards? Or do you want to just replace it with another temporary bridge? And so what's all the cost lifespan analysis there? I think that's true. But even though we have 10 years, maybe only halfway into the lifespan. Yeah, I would, I would bump it lower. Only because, yeah, yeah, only yeah. because I, I think. How low are we going? It's the lowest or four? You got five. I, Although you can change your scale, but I, I suggested one through five. I think we're trying to pick one, is right? Okay. But yeah. It's easy to kind of, um, like, think of, as we talk about them, to kind of give a priority. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that's going to, uh, the ambulance service, we, we don't currently have a contract. Um, so I, I don't know. I don't, maybe but, it's not a two, there's nothing. It's a two-year contract. Yeah. They proposed a contract, but the board uh, wanted to suggest a revision, um, a couple of revisions. They've been non-responsive to a few outreaches about will you accept these revisions and revise or not. Um, they're not communicative. So I've, I've reached out to different contacts at their office to see if we can reach somebody else who might facilitate this. Um, I'm sure it'll get moved forward when they come looking for their annual disbursement. So when is the contract? Is the official contract getting um, it would, well. It, there isn't one in place right now. You're, you are operating without a contract. I mean, I don't think the service is going to stop. But. The, the other thing that, that this item could mean, if, if the board wants it to, is that um, there are people at the fire department who believe that there is um, market availability for offering ambulance services ourselves, which are profitable. Um, you know, somebody could do a cost-benefit analysis to see if that's worthwhile. So that, you know, it's, 
it's going to take time to figure out, and maybe it's a good idea, maybe it's not. Um, you were saying we would host an ambulance service? For, for volunteer to host an ambulance and hire the appropriate staff. It, I can't see that. We lost the <laughs> no, so. Okay. But thank you for the call. Well, it's okay. It, it's just, so the flip side of that is there are not a lot of options when you're looking at contracting out. And, and um, there's been a lot of discontent with the options that are, you know, available. So we need to do some research on what's, basically we need to do some research on what's available for options. Um, we, we know what's available and, and they're not great. So it's about evaluating the options to see, you know, so, so in theory you're about to be in a two-year contract, but while you're in this two-year contract, evaluating, like, and, and it's a landscape that continues to change all the time. These ambulance companies go out of business and the new ones get created, so. So maybe we should make it one that based on what we have to go, we have options at this point? Um, I think we can do that. Um, Mark has has generally done that for us. So I, I, I think it's an appropriate time because it's you know, nearly budget season again. Um, so yeah, I think we can. Do we do we have um, a presentation from the various companies or what the, the offers are? No, essentially there's um, no. Uh, we have the one company we're involved with, which hasn't done a presentation. There was a meeting, perhaps um, four years ago, with the two options at the time, who came and met with the board in an open forum with the department heads to talk about what level of service and how this might work and what we want for reporting and other things in exchange for that service. Um, and, the, and, and basically there were two options at that time. Um, one company which is no longer in business in, in that current form, um, which was offering free service, but they didn't have the same level of having an ambulance always available should you need it kind of service. Um, and also they're not located as close to town, so their response rate would be slower. So this so is that's all why the stuff we, we should have somewhere, somewhere so we can kind of review it and know, um, like, because of, like, tomorrow I'm not going to remember everything you told me. I <laughs> fully understand and I don't know what to say about that because okay. everything is kind of in that state where everything is not really summarized, but it's in somebody's head. Um, um, so maybe we do make it a one and start putting that together. Um, at least summarize what we know and, you know and what we have for options at a high level. And then Maybe we ask Mark to do that because he would be more aware of the current. Yeah, that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. We can delegate this one very easily. Um, when you added your column, you didn't you didn't add a whole row. Oh no. Out of oh no. So we delegated to Mark in the water actually. Yeah, I see. Um, I, I could go either way. I, I mean, I, I only bring it up because it, um, we're operating without a contract. And then we haven't talked about it. Why? Why? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I won't go with Noah until morning. So, um, okay. can we ask Pete that he summarize um, our current position, what, what we have for options, and what the um, obstacles are with the various services? Just, just as a start. Um, yeah, like, I mean, I don't want to throw something out there, but, you know, if York is this, and we don't say dog is more, but if dog is X amount more, we provide that much better service. Well, we need to have written proposals. Right. From them. I'm sorry, I'm looking for that um, thing so I can... It was further up. So back to ambulance, um, is that a one? Yeah. <clears throat> What's the, um, the timeline on the hydro license going on? 
I would say that's a low priority, but something to keep on your radar that you all just signed a one-year extension to the lease agreement, but um, that's going to expire in approximately June of next year. So you would want to engage by you know early next year with the new process. So it's, it's not for this week, and it's not town meeting related, but it's going to hit, I would say, right before town meeting. Yeah, three, four. <coughs> should tell others as well. Three or four. Let's see four. I'm okay with that. I, I yeah. think we can. Can you add one to the bottom on what was in the list of going on? And that's a um, capital items um, in the purchasing process. Before we go into budget season, I think it's important that we start. We don't have this. It's in our financial policy. There is a there is a purchasing policy. Yeah. Um, so you want to? I want to make sure we have a formal process <coughs> around um, the, the bidding um, requirements and purchasing of capital. Um, yes, I will add that. Um, um, but in the meantime, I will share with you um, the purchasing policy because for the most part it's addressed. So I think okay. what that might really mean is a policy revision okay. or review. Okay. Well, let me look at that. And or enforcement policy. That, that too, um, yes. Because a policy that's in a document doesn't mean that it's following it. Right. Do you want to give that a number? I think it's important that we have clarity around what that is before we go into budget season. Um, well, and maybe it's not really critical for budget season, but definitely, um, you know, as part of our process going forward after this year's capital vote, I'll say. So if, if we have a whole bunch of capital items that are proposed and voted on, my goal is to have a policy in place on how we handle that. So, I mean, it's probably just a, a matter of reviewing at this point and seeing if things have changed. So maybe we don't give it a number and, and look over the policy. And my guess is you're probably not going to complete this worksheet tonight. And so when we come back and revisit this, okay. you can decide whether you think the policy needs revision and then we can. Yeah, the policy is fairly specific. Over this dollar amount, you need three quotes. Okay. And whatever. I, I don't remember what the policy says now. Yeah. Um, it's something like that. But it is... But we don't really want to say Because I know, for example, yeah. the phone and security system, we only got one mm -hmm. proposal, um, one written proposal. And so the goal is to really have a more formal process around getting that and enforcing it. But it is, I think, the enforcement, because you put policies out to employees, and then they, it, it's, uh, it's, on the, it's for the board to decide that you're going to approve it because it met the requirements or not. Mm -hmm. okay. I think there was a situation earlier with the uh, board where my daughter said it was tree cutting. And you know, I asked George and the folks about it. And they knew a person. And they wanted the same person. Right. And uh, the people I spoke to, I said, well, you know, at least get a quote. Written quotes. Yeah. 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 Proposed and agreed. Can you float back up to the top of the table? Yeah. Um, you can put top ones for. Yeah. The chief contract items? Um, I responded to your email. Oh, okay. I'll put that first. Um, that's, that's not really necessarily an action item for right this minute, but it's something for the board to keep an eye on. There, there is a deadline that's passed, which the board can mutually agree with the chief to extend. Um, but there are some deliverables there that still need, um, or, or that are noted in the contract, whether you choose to want to follow up on them or not. So these were in addition to um, what John has already completed? 
I don't know that they're in addition to, some of them are, but I think it's about taking what he said and, and you know, how does that relate to a plan? A plan has not been created, so there needs to be a plan, or, or it says in the contract, a plan. So, so what he said is an update, but it's not a plan. So, so the plan was due at 90 days, and then now um, what he sent for updates, how does that relate to a plan, and then those other things. Okay. Gotcha. I would, I'd be all right to say plan I would say two only because okay. we, it's just like, yeah, two is very small. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm talking about the problems of the website. Oh. I would think we could at least do it for that. I agree. It functions. Um, it's just, it's run by a private person. Yeah. We don't own the domain. Um, yeah. Are there problems with it? Except that I can I hear it's it's not ideal to have somebody who's disconnected from daily operations managing it because it doesn't get up, updated as as regular course. Like you know, she isn't necessarily aware of the board's vote for who's gonna be on budget and who's gonna be on planning. So so the, the website doesn't automatically up, get updated with those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, but then Related to that, right underneath, change away from Google, that's another, it's, it's related because Google doesn't talk very well with the website, so, um, like the agendas are in a Google folder, which is referenced through the website, but it's a lot of separate clicks. You can't, you know, it, do you want to put static documents that don't change versus reference to a folder where you can keep adding things? Um, there's just some functionality problems with it that way. It's it's a public um, template. It's not really a professional template. So the flexibility is really limited. Um, so so that kind of falls under the communication and the as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we want to delete this and add it to that? I, so, so to my mind, we have two things. Yeah. One is, is the yeah. communication piece of it, and the other, which is related, is the staff management part of it. Do we want to combine those and put it in um, communication? Um, I can put it in this question document under the or bullet it under the communication thing. I'll, I'll, all right, okay. so I will, if that's okay, I'll just put a note over here. Um, I added it to my as a share doc. Okay. Just to lump them together. All right, and then I'll. So, um, I have to go circle back to the road plan as being higher priority um, coming into the budget season. Um, for, so for that reason, I think the priority on that could maybe be a little bit higher. Yeah. Um, or at least a short-term road plan. Right, okay. That, I, that I'd be on board with. Because George has, we're going to be out of the paving season, I don't know, it's super. We only have a few more months, um, and if we really want to do these projects, I, I'm not saying it's not important. I'm just saying that we might need to act more quickly. So a short term. Yeah, maybe like, next year's work better. Right, yeah. and like really, mm -hmm. um, you know, have scrap regional planning do it for us again. Um, why don't we know? Do we need to have them do it, or can we work with George? I mean, he gave me a list of the, the severity of the roads. Maybe it's a matter of us kind of like talking about um, his recommendations and, and coming up with a, a short-term plan for next year based on that, which might be faster. So what they going to drive you yeah. What's that? Going to drive to the I did. I have been. Okay. So um, you see some of the roads. Yeah. I so started he took, to. He did it. I think he was a little coarse, but he took me out right after. Like right when it was spring, and the roads would be as bad as it could be. I bet if we went now, some of the roads wouldn't seem as bad. Yeah. I'd like to see them again for our advertising. But there's a couple I was surprised by. But yeah, I'm agree with that. We can do that part of it next year. Maybe call it the 2022 road plan? Yeah. Do we want to separate that into two so, yeah. separate road plans, like the long term and the short term? 
Um, so, so, and, and it's okay to say no, but I guess my point or my goal is that you are about to have um, all of your stormwater infrastructure on GIS. Um, I believe you can get all the water sewer infrastructure through GIS as well. And that way, you can integrate the plans so that you know you have really old infrastructure in some areas and not so much in other areas, and that might influence how you want to rank your roads in terms of what kind of treatment what years. So that you're doing what's underneath the road at the same time that you're digging up the like repaving. So um, there's potential there. I just want to put it out there. That doesn't, I mean, you can continue to just do annual plans, and there's not really anything wrong with that. It's just, um, how you want to evaluate the plan, uh, get you the roads, um, and, and how much time and, and money you want to spend on the idea. Um, so, so do you think the 2022 plan should be um, a number one? Because we need to figure out the dollar that we need to start getting bids for budget season. Yes, agree. I agree with that. Um, that we should have some idea of going into the budget. What we're going to plan to do. Yeah. So, what are you performing once you're in central codes? You're proposed to have them three or four rows tied and priced put into the budget for 25 years. I mean, right. I think that would be the goal. That would be. No, I agree. Yeah. I don't think we can make that happen. I'm not saying we can, but because that, sometimes that changes too. And I know George is really. Uh, Really, the, really pushing for Jesse though. Really I didn't even see that one as well. I'm really? Sure. I'm surprised. He told me at least two or three times. Yeah, he's he'd like to get Jesse Doe done this year. Um, I'm not I'm not convinced that he's did a complete reclamation. He has a printed list. Did you guys yeah. get that? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, yeah. Is that a good way to Okay. You can, so somebody, somebody typed it, so I don't know if he has it in Google that he could share it. Well, he gave me a hard copy. Yeah. I thought it was in my no, car. No, but he, he typed it, though, so was I think email? that it's... It was an email. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to go with the thought. You know, I was talking to George. I did mention the fact that if you go from basically the road that goes up to the front house, Yep. To where C and J is, that spit is really, it's really bad. And it's not so they're just kind of fixing that part of the road, especially with that. It's pretty adamant for the whole thing. But I agree with you that maybe an alternative to fix that oh, yes. part and worry about Because it seems like the start and the end is not bad. I, yeah, it's but down of, below is. So. I, I mean, there's a economy of skill <clears throat> to get all the equipment there and, and sure. just do it, right? I agree. But what's the we need, we need numbers. Right, like, right. is it ten thousand dollars to do a patch job? One hundred thousand to do the whole thing. Right, I agree. Right. Okay, so I'll tell you the next thing. So short term versus long term. Yep. Yep. Um, I think we said the tax collector compensation policy was important because we're coming into budget season, and actually that would be a warrant article change, right? Well, yes. If we did that, wouldn't that, I mean, if you do that, wouldn't it be also talking about the point of pressure, right? So we would not be able to achieve five years. The chief has a, well, you certainly can do that. You well, know, I'm so so he's anything. already not treated as an employee, so that situation is a little less complicated as opposed to the tax collector who's been treated as an employee, and then there's that's a little bit more confusing, which is she and how are we compensating that? Whereas he just gets a stipend. Okay. And there's like, you know how is that determined though? The stipend? Mm -hmm. Um, the board through the budgeting process. Last year. The salary for next one year. So either way, appointed officials, um, except for the road agent, are set by a town meeting. So it was determined last year, Ken, that the amount of time the chief was spending in his job that it was beneficial to be able to stipend as opposed to 
I don't remember exactly how we get paid for that. She was in the point system with the calls. Yeah. Oh, okay. he, would get, he would get a set amount and then call me. Yeah, he so got a smaller stipend plus so calls. All over so now he gets flat. only the stipend and no call volume. Yeah. Which that increases the money available for calls to the rest of the firefighters. And I just got to ask the other question too. So would we also need the same because it would become clerk? On one two for the same thing. That's a really good idea. I would. Um, so he's in a three-year position. So I, I, I think it would be a better thing to do every three years when that position comes up. So how? So you would, in a warrant article, say, tech, uh, town clerk gets twenty-five thousand a year with a two percent per year every year. Or I guess we need. Um, I would suggest that you do this. You, you could even use what turns out to be the tax collector compensation policy as a model and just call it town clerk compensation policy. And the warrant article would say to, um, you know, provide salary and benefits to the tax collector according to the tax collector compensation policy. Um, and, and just by reference. And so just okay. like we do with the zoning ordinance amendments, you're not including the whole zoning ordinance. It's just by reference. So then you make that available on the website and at the meetings for people to read ahead of time. I think we can make it too. We got a lot of ones. <laughs> right. Well, this is this yeah, they got well, a lot of ones. I mean, but we're talking about, well, are we talking about importance? I mean, we, and we can this is conceivably just kick this one to like January, February, right? Before we really had to have something. You have to make that, uh, the whole thing available at the public hearing in mid-January. It's a it's a two it's our like top two. Like when we get Yeah. And Did we not bring that one up already? Um we yeah we did. Okay. Oh, we didn't break we didn't yeah.
this next one, survey of transfer station slash conservation land, um, is related to how we don't really know how much of the transfer station um, we're using relative to what we're allowed to use because of the federal grant that allowed us to buy Scotland and how we built the transfer station in that land and then we did a land swap to compensate. So um, I'm sure the transfer station would like to expand so that we can store more materials so that we can make better use of hauling and save more money. But even as things exist right now, I don't know whether we're going to pass the audit that we can expect um, any day now from the state around that conservation land. We budget for a um, survey? Yes, okay. and I'm in the process of getting a quote for it. And Wednesday morning, the engineers are going to come and we're just going to discuss the idea of it so that they can get a better sense for quoting purposes. So that's in motion, but just to the quote level. Is it time sensitive? Only in that we don't know, A, when we may be audited by the state, uh, which we've been told is coming soon and should have already happened years ago, and also um, for the functionality of the transfer station. Um, however, you might prioritize that. I want to say three. Yeah, I was going to say three, too. Yes. <laughs> I think that's fine. I mean, I think it, it, it's gone this many years, and if, if they pull up in a parking lot tomorrow and say, where's your survey? Yeah. Go give us a warning, a slap on the hand. Well, they're going to, it's um, likely to be fines and, and take back of land, or, you know, find more land to compensate for the land that we're currently using. Uh, because if we don't have a survey, we're not required to do the survey. The survey is for our own purposes to see how compliant we are. They're going to come in and tell us how compliant we are, and it would be good to know ahead of time so that we can make adjustments when we need to. So we are in year three. We just started year three, and we're about to do the annual report on year two. So this is a um, it's, it's regulated. Because we discharge stormwater into the river, we have this EPA permit that we have. It starts out small, like you need to know where your outfalls are, and then it builds and it builds and builds and builds until like year ten. Until five, and then it gets renewed. Oh, okay. Um, so at this point, um, I, th I mean, I, we're meeting all of the all of the who. Um, what are the asks for this? It's so we had a volunteer sort of managing this um, process for us. Um, he's decided to leave. Um, so it's I don't know if you can describe the ask for that. Probably at least this will fall good at least. Fair to say, at least the ball is at least halfway up on water, and they were not sick. That's a good word, which is right. We did a lot of labor work up front. Yeah, and he was kind of a coordinator for the whole thing, and he attended the meetings with um, the communities who work together to make sure that we have materials to mail out when we're supposed to, and how are we addressing whether we're um, doing street sweeping once a year or twice a year, how did you build a wash station, what's the template to do the annual permit. There's a lot of collaborative learning because everybody decided um, it would be beneficial to have a unified approach um, around like being consistent with how we're reporting and how we're performing in the permit so that no individual community is targeted for doing it differently. Um, so. So we need to find a volunteer. Is that the answer? Well, I, I think this I'm is kind of involved now. Carolyn's involved. Um, we, do, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have a volunteer. I, I think we definitely involved. need more volunteers on the committee, but I would suggest that you need a coordinator who's really responsible for making sure, you know, is it is it time to put out a mailing? Um, what is our fall responsibility around leaf collection? And have we met that? Or, or to sort of remind the committee that they ought to be looking for materials for that um, and, and to draft and start compiling the annual report because that's um, pretty technical. 
So some of the things we had on other times is like we we do scoop and we have some towels and uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other examples you gave us. But there's a couple of things that we actually do that we're already we're already done to do every time we have to go to the station, the fire station, that'll take care of something that we shouldn't do anyway. So there's a few things we're already have. But we gotta continuously have them. So should we put a position, uh, a description of responsibilities together and send, put it out on the website for volunteers? Um, Could we do it, something as simple as that? We, we certainly can. I guess I would just bring to your attention that um, we put out announcements around boards and committees and didn't get any volunteers. And this one, we benefited from having an engineer do it. And, and that was really helpful. So it, I would suggest that it's probably not just any volunteer, but you would need to have some kind of organizational skills. So not to say that it's not possible, but just that we need to make sure that something happens with it. Maybe I can do it. I'll talk to you. Yeah. I know you'd be perfect for it. Perfect. That's a brilliant thought. Yeah. Um, so anyways, um, so let's prioritize this. Two. Yeah, it, we can't take our eyes can't take it too far. I mean, I would no. say three, but two for that. And then there was another one I thought. Nitrogen primer kind of falls under. They're kind of related. A little better with that. Probably need that. Um, you, you probably could. It's just that whoever, um, like the stormwater committee agreed to take on nitrogen because they're related, and I would just suggest that they stayed tied together because they're so related. So if we have a stormwater committee, why would they not manage this process that you're talking, that you just described? They, they sort of kind of mostly, well, they sort of kind of do, but they're volunteers and you can't hold them accountable and they maybe show up and maybe don't. And mostly they're available to provide input, but they it was that one person who really did that work. This really should be done by them. So what about, what about, um, there, we have Kate Preston on this committee who is a water sewer operator, which is helpful so that we're, it kind of creates some communication in time. I don't want to volunteer because she sort of takes the place of all of the organization and making sure things go out and I can I can ask her. I don't think that's really I don't think she would want to, but I can certainly ask her. Also, a lot of the I don't know if there's still there's still meetings that go on, right? But they all happen. Um, there are quite a lot of meetings because nitrogen is new, and communities are trying to figure out what is the impact of taking a septic system offline. Like, how much could you expect to um, save with nitrogen discharge for, for doing that? And you know, um, you know, like basically, like the technical stuff around it. Um, there are lots of meetings, and they um, and they're during the day. Um, so I would say meetings account for probably maybe four or five hours a month. So you would want somebody who could go to those meetings, I think, to stay up to date on what people are thinking and doing, so that we have all the information we we need to do a good job with that. Yeah. And then maybe, you know, come back with course, I actually 
surprised. Hopefully not surprised the other way. Right. Yeah. I, Uh, when is the plan going to 2020, right? Or was um, it's, it was last created in, um, in 2010. It's supposed to be updated every 10 years. You can do it in chapters. You don't have to do it all at once. So how do you, how do you like, as I've been reading about this, how do you, basically this RSA covers this, it should be a planning board. Yeah. It is a planning board task but the planning board is really pretty new and and um, we're challenged in Rollinsburg because we see so little development and so few cases on the planning board relative to some of our bigger neighbors that it's really hard for our new planning board members to ever not be new so um, I guess I would so they never formulate the plan because nobody wanted to be on well they 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 kind of see it as the town's responsibility there's like we're kind of doing that a little bit it's pretty specific it's very, it, it is definitely a planning very, board very specific oh it is it's definitely but, but there needs to be um like funding or support from the town so i think you can decide to tell the planning board um it's free um like we're not putting any money on it figure it out this year at least one chapter you, you could do something like that or you can say we're going to budget five thousand dollars next year do the best you can with a chapter with an organization that might help you with that or or something like that because they they can't figure out funding so you all need to support with funding or or not um and then maybe give them some directive about that Even, although there's no directive because they don't really report to the board that way but i'm going to vote for you yeah, I mean, yeah. Who's requesting this? Um, it's not really requesting so much as um, I believe that we are supposed to have one. I know that we have one, but I'm not sure how out of date it is. I don't know offhand. And I'm asking these questions. These are, I'm waiting to hear back from people about how frequently it's supposed to happen. I believe it's like the hazard mitigation plan where it's supposed to happen. Um, at least once every five years. So, um, and I believe we're out of date. So I, I just, it's kind of like a marker to make sure it stays on the radar. But there is funding for it. That's the good news is um, kind of like we did the hazard mitigation plan facilitated by um, Stratford Regional Planning who got funding for us um, to figure that out. I think something similar, although perhaps not with Strapa Regional, could happen for that as well. Three. Yeah, I'm going to three. Mm -hmm. Two. Maybe one. I can be talking to one. Um, at least discussion. What's that? Well, I, I say two um, because I feel like we have some issues that we have to figure out a plan for and the position's approved. Yeah. I would, I would go with a two. Um, it's it's important. Is it a one? Probably not. Um, but I do think we need to we need to figure out how to maintain our facilities. So benefit reviews. Is that that's something that we've really done, right? Well, it's um, maybe three years ago the select board decided that health insurance that the rate increase was too much, and they changed the health insurance plan. So. That's what this um, we should make it came from. Like, like, do you want to offer dental? Do you want to change the health insurance? Yeah, probably plan? Make that too. Yeah, it's going to be important for for budget season. Um, yeah, the last time we changed the plan, we went from like a ten dollar copay to a twenty dollar copay, yeah. and it saved us seven thousand dollars a year. Not a lot of money. Um, um, and, and so that's um, half the conversation no, about it, but if you're going to do any changes, then you really ought to start those changes in, in kind of like April in order to have time to have the benefits people meet with employees to talk about what the changes or options might be. So, so, um, so there's a cycle around how you yeah. prioritize this. So if this is, you know, you can certainly... For example, offer dental, and that'll have a cost, and that's pretty simple. If you want to evaluate changing 
a health insurance plan, then we can start getting quotes, but you have a really tight deadline in meeting with employees, to, like making a decision, evaluating options, and then meeting with employees to talk about the changes and get feedback, and then um, sign whatever paperwork to make that happen by January 1st. That's just tight. Um, and as I recall, this is one of the last numbers we get. It is one of the very last numbers before the budget is really finalized. But I think it's still a good conversation to have because if it's a priority, you can get sort of general ideas about if we go to this very different health insurance idea, generally we can save between 10 or 15 or 10 or, or whatever that is. Or you can start engaging with employees to say, um, if, if you want to take that approach and say how important is your current insurance to you and how much are you flexible about that if you want to approach it that way. So I, I think it's still worth having on there for discussion purposes. Okay. What does across the board staffing work this mean? Um, so we started a conversation around hours worked mm -hmm. in the administration. I think it would behoove us to know is, is the staffing at the highway department. The fire department is what it is. Um, police, we kind of, I think, just, we haven't had a direct conversation with John about, like, are we good now? I feel like we are. But I, I would say that we've, we've like, we've got two patrol men on, we've got the prosecutor. And yeah, I think he is, he should be. He's a yeah, he's a good shape. But we need to have that conversation. I agree. Yeah, just to make sure he doesn't I think he has another idea. Yeah. So I, I think the problem I have with this is I think it's going to start with um, an understanding of what everybody's doing. You know, um, what position, so what the responsibilities are in the various departments um, and how we're staffed and what the um, expectations are. So you guys are doing the volunteer? Um, I think it's probably two. I want to say two. Yeah, I think two is I think two is good. Um, I think the same thing. That's call that same thing. Yep. Um, so when I first moved back to town, one of the committees I was on was a salary review committee, um, and I think that that's a important tool. Um, so when I was on, we we reviewed the fire chief and the town clerk. Um, and I don't know, maybe there's information that's available through the Municipal Association about, um, like I have no idea where we are. I know, you know, compared to Dover, we pay a lot less. Um, but we're not, we're not Dover. So, right, exactly. Um, but you are competing with Dover right. when it comes for, <laughs> for like that. open positions, police officer and employee gets to choose. You, you, there is still that context. So just out of curiosity, going back to one quick question. I don't know if anybody asked, just going back to staff. John, did we, did we know about the latest candidate? Um, he accepted the provisional offer. Okay, thank you. I didn't. So that's it's, okay, good. So, so it should be all set. So now they're going to start their process so with the background check both, and all those things. Both generally have accepted and once are they on board. Then they have a perfect. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, important, but um, I mean, there's no real work to be done. It needs to be outsourced. Um, unless you I, I think it's about prioritizing what sections of documents um, and, and how much money will, you, like, will it cost to accomplish your goals um, or how do you break it up into manageable pieces. Yeah. Um, that's as much as the internal work, and then learning how to access, like creating a nomenclature. You have to work on creating a consistent nomenclature so that you can then find your stuff. But but I agree with you. It's it's relatively minimal, and mostly that's about cost. Do we have a policy now about what we accept plans that get to tie that to PDFs, so we have a file of all the things coming in? That's a good idea. Can we? Mm -hmm. I don't see why as a town we can't. Right. Make the applications, policy. yes. Um, but it gets 11 by 
11 by what, 17 is pretty standard. Right, so um, except when you get to filing of the registry, and then they need to be full size and they need to be signed by the engineer and all the professionals and the planning board chair, and that's the part that's complicated. So, um, and then there's also the certified mail to prove that you notified all of the abutters. So um, the paper is, the incoming paper is reduced, but we still have those full size plans that we don't have a way to, we don't have a digital process for approved plans. Okay. So, so is it, I'm just asking, is it as simple as if we had a full size plan, say it's, I don't know, even four feet? We had a scanner or a plotter that was, I don't know, say 2,000. The ones we used to have at our old place. Mm -hmm. um, literally scan it, PDF it. Would that, <coughs> that would take care of any plans for the registry right? or anything that we need to do? My understanding is that the um, scanners that scan these things are really expensive. So I don't know. That, you, that's what. No, like, yeah, you'd be surprised. I mean, I, we, had, we had some of Less than three grand. Um, that was back years ago. That was so years not ago. every community has them, yeah. and I would think that they would if they performed the function to the level that they wanted to. So I think that's something worth looking into. Okay. But I but I have to wonder why if it if they were um, achievable financially, why more communities wouldn't have them because they don't. So. I, I think that would be a great goal because it's a way to stay on top of things. Um, we would need somebody to do that and we could figure it out. We still have to create a nomenclature to make sure that people name the things in a consistent way that makes sense. Um, so that is a definitely like a way we can move forward. And I think when we digitize whatever the past is, we should put effort into making sure we can maintain it so we're not digitizing every five or ten right. years or something. So, what is preservation of both? I have to ask the same question. Yeah. Um, the files themselves or the vault? So, so the vault in the other room has um, items of historical significance um, as are not very objectively defined. It's kind of random what's in there. There are some things that are very obviously of historical value, but it's not organized. Um, so it's not really clear what's in there, but then also what is in there, um, so it's, it's not organized, so we don't really know what's in there, but maybe if we care about certain things, then we should take care to either um, professionally preserve them, at least organize them, know what they are. Um, okay, three. Yeah, three. But I don't, you know, it's, I'd be curious myself just to program. Like, like, oh, yeah. I hope you do, yeah. Yeah. because it's, it's cool just mind-blowing and really cool. Floppy well, disks for like the internet. Well, right, and that's part of it. Like, like how do we, how do we look at those and see, like, do we want to pay to have them restored? And if we do, we better do it soon before it's not possible anymore, because there are floppy disks. Well, I want to see a town record from, like, 1887. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can't really read it. It's all in this, like... Fancy curse. Yeah. yeah. What is Town Hall Police Department? It needs a new one, right? Right. Yeah. Well, we're we're evaluating that idea. Missed that boat already. Yeah, I would say three. Uh, I would go lower if we're four. Or higher. Um, um, two. Five. Four. Um, okay. Only because I feel like what you just said, Ken, yeah. like we, we've been down that path. I don't feel like we've got enough public input on it. So I feel like the board. Four. made a decision without enough public input, so I think it's a subject that should be well, revisited, but maybe not right away. The board away. never made a decision. It only it just did. didn't... It died because it there died. wasn't right. the appropriate well, there information. Was, there was a public hearing about whether or not to put one on Silver Street, and there was a lot of negativity from the public about that location, and then whether or not it should be I with disagree. or without the town. I don't know. I, I want to go on record and say I disagree. I feel like there was even split at the public hearing. There was definitely some positive input yes. too, but, yeah. but there was, but what got it off the ballot for that year was that there was enough negative input about no. what does it cost to maintain this versus... No. It was the, there was an error in the interest calculation. That well, that presented. too. That so was a factor for sure. Ballot. Yes, that was a factor. And then it died. Um, yeah, so there were kind of a bunch of things I would say about it, but... Three, um, three or four. Three. Okay. 
or miss for. In the meantime, you know, your current police chief feels as though his current space, if it's maintained, is adequate. Let's go. Um, that's probably the same. That's my opinion of that. That's the inventory. I, I did send out emails to some of the neighboring um, towns as well, so we need to go back. That's my Yeah, I, I think, honestly, I think that we've got to use a little bit of self judgment to come up with a list that's right. also a dollar, not just the yeah. time of the year, but also a dollar. dollar. Yeah. Maybe something that's $50 to really do a week. You know, but something that's, you know, 3000 should be down. I, I think it's something that's. Um, worthy of a policy because I think there are also things that may not have a monetary value but may have a historical value or they may be artwork or um, some other things that um, I think I say too because also do, I did read the auditor's report and it came up as part of that so I say two. Um, two, yeah, number two. Uh, three. <laughs> so what's the got background on that? Um, We've talked about LED streetlights for a long time, and the payback is really quick, like two years. Um, and basically, your $36,000 lighting bill goes away. Okay. Um, so I think it's worth... What's the cost, though? There's a cost. I, I don't know the numbers anymore. So I, I think you, you finance of... the idea, which is kind of like we did an LED conversion for the town buildings. and. Essentially, it keeps the utility bills level until the project's paid right. off, and then the utility so, bills drop down. So, really, it's um, it's about putting efforts into writing an RFP, putting an RFP out there, specifying what's in the RFP, and then um, putting it on the warrant, probably, unless you want to put that much money in um, the operating budget. Is there? Is there? I mean, it sounds like it's. Efficient, it sounds like that's like pollution all that. Is it any type of grant? Is any type of grant for that? So, not that, you know, there, remember when we did this, there was a, a match from Eversource. And it's different. It's, and that, because I asked when that happened, and that doesn't qualify. Okay. Um, is this on the CIP? I don't think so. Okay. I mean, maybe that's but a I think that's a good place. Right. place for it. Um, I think it's hard to determine um, priority if you don't know the business value. You know? I mean, the net value of the project. Mm -hmm. Well, I was originally going to give a three. I'm listening to Miles and some of the, I could go either way. If you think it's a two, I'm okay with that. I mean, I would, I would personally love to see it happen. But, you know, two or three, I, I don't think. I think that's what I would say. But yeah, yeah. so efficient. That's approximately yeah. yeah. so yeah. efficient. So we should call it, call it something. We can put a three there. Right. Right. Okay, <laughs> so I hate to say it, but three. <laughs> I, I go on your own. Well, the only so thing I would so say about it is that it might play into both, A, providing really good quality hybrid meetings, not immediately, but like plan it. And, um, you know, if you wanted to talk about the public access TV channel and who might monitor that. But separately from that, um, it, the ARPA funds could fund um, the technology in this room if you wanted the public access channel for hybrid meetings. So so that's another way to think about it, um, which you don't have to um, And we did just pay our attorney to go through it and make recommendations. So we should probably act on it. Well, I, that's an opportunity cost, right? So if you sit on it and don't address it right now, then you're going to have to yeah. pay the attorney to look at so it again and do it. We have that So can, can someone summarize? Um, I, I will items? send you the, okay. um, the cable. I, um, Basically, our contract is like 20 years old. Oh, it's like 50 years 50 old? Years it's like old. it's a billion years old. We've been doing one year renewals, and it's only cable, it's not internet. Um, basically, the terms that Comcast is able to operate in the town. Um, but there are things you can ask for, like wire the buildings for, you know. For public, public access, access channels and, and things like that. And, and the school could get a public access channel if they wanted as part of the agreement. So, um, we could too, but we, we don't want it. 
Yeah, so it's something you could talk and revisit if you wanted to. So every cable bill has a government fee, and the government fee gets paid to the town, which is currently about $30,000. Um, it, it's not, um, other, other, it doesn't prevent other cable providers from coming into town. It, you know, it doesn't make it easy either because they own all the lines, so, you know, but, but it doesn't prevent that. So let's Since see. you don't know more about it, I'm, I'll, I'll just like try to. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it affects less and less. I mean, still something needs to be known. I believe it affects less and less town residents as time goes on because less and less people are probably using all the cable. Yeah. Right. Stuff, that's right. You know, there's there's still a lot of people that are. So. And that's a really good point to keep in mind from a budgeting perspective because that money is going to go down, the money that you get from mm -hmm. that, as fewer people have it. Um, Cybersecurity? That's just something that I've added. Um, I So in, in talking to Tom Bell and um, seeing on the government finance officers list serve that a small town our side got, hacked um, and ransomware, um, put them out for several days while they figured out how to get out of a ransom situation. Um, I brought that to the board's attention and um, at my recommendation we asked for employees to do free cybersecurity training or anybody with a town issue device and Almost nobody has done that training, so I'm just bringing that to your attention. I did send that reminder of that. I want to give it a three. The only reason is I'm not saying the training is important. If someone with cybersecurity abilities, the training probably is going to be great. Well, right. So the biggest, I guess, I guess my point about that is the biggest vulnerability is Fishing employees who like accidentally that. click on an email that looks genuine that isn't. Exactly. So. In fact, speaking of that, I've done some funny ones. <laughs> oh, there yeah. are some funny ones. Not related to like select board. Like I've got a couple that yeah. I know weren't from that Denise. That person knows that they were hacked. That's it. Hey, hey Denise said. wants your request for help right off, and I'm like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> and there was a couple like that. There was another yeah. one that you brought up. I can't remember who it was. Yeah, so in HMA inside each other. Yeah. So, um, so, so, so training is one aspect about that, but it's just sort of also a general technology infrastructure vulnerability assessment idea too. Great. Yeah, I guess. Uh, three is yeah, three is fine. What steps do we take to protect ourselves? Um, like if there's a firewall. We have a firewall. Um, that's a good conversation for Tom LaBelle. I'm yeah. asking him to kind of help us assess. We had to do a multi-page self-assessment and provide that to Primex, our insurance carrier, because this is such an insurance problem lately. Um, and it was very technical, and I, you know, I brought that to Tom's attention. Where we've worked on that. Um, so he's identifying things that need to be done and an associated cost. So I'm trying to work with him to create a plan, um, like a multi-year plan of, you know, level of importance with cost, a recommendation for the board to consider, which we might integrate into a budget process. And I don't know how much we're going to be ready for that in this budget season. So I, I don't have a direct answer for you okay. because I don't know enough about it except to say it's on Tom's radar. Um, Okay. Um, so I thought we ranked the old Noah Wayne Bridge. It's true. I think we can get a three. I think we can kick that can a I think yeah, it's a three. Because we're halfway into a 10 year plan. Yeah. It's okay. just that. So, so George met this gentleman. I, I, I know that it's on George's like okay. shorter term radar, but then. So you're likely to hear about it. Well, let's do it. Okay. I, I gotta say, I, I mean, the literature itself and reading it about the bridges they provided is kind of interesting because I don't, I'm going by memory and I could be off, but I'm gonna say if you were 78,000, maybe 170, you know, it's, it's maybe 178. Yeah, yeah, it's significantly less expensive if you like the idea of what it offers and you think it passes muster um, with what you want to provide. What I would really not want to do is another 
20, you know, temporarily, you have another, you know, just pay 150, and then another 150, you get a permit, which for 150 is something. Um, I have a few more things that was on the list. Okay. Um, no. <laughs> um, so one of the things on my list was on the um, town clerk tax collector deputy coverage effort. Um, I mentioned that um, because I don't believe we have a firm plan for deputy coverage. Um, and in talking to several of the other communities as part of my Juneteenth conversation, etc., um, I got some background on the approach for these positions and how they cover each other. To, so we don't have to close um, necessarily because somebody's taking a day off. So yeah, we did address that with like like Chuck now covers the front office so that and, and that happened like two weeks this past like, Friday, a week and a half ago that Dan was out and Chuck But does he have the ability to do all the things that, that um, Dan the, the only limitation is election related. Oh, so he can do motor vehicle registration. Is he a resident? Yeah. And that's, that's why he can't cover that elections legal? then. Yes. So for him to be doing um, town work and tax collector responsibilities as a non-resident? He he's is. not doing any tax collector related responsibilities, which by the way is another thing to kind of think about with this is that um, should it's always a good idea to have more than one person know every given function so that if somebody gets hit by a bus, that there's a way to compensate for that. I prefer that. So, they went to so, the box, it sounds bad. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Yes, so... Um, you don't have to be a resident of the town to be a deputy? You do to be a deputy. He's not a deputy. But he registers vehicles and, you know... And that's, that's legal under the... Yes. So, so the, it's vital records doesn't get covered, but you can go anywhere in the state to get vital records. Um, so we kind of have a band aid. Yes. Essentially, yeah. I think we it's, but, but that's but that's one way. There there is no deputy or any kind of coverage for the tax collector, right? Okay. Um, and then audit issues. Um, so I did read the um, auditor's report and. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, so, so some concerns about um, one of them being the inventory process. The other one was our purchase order approval process. I noted that that um, department heads are purchasing without prior approval. So that right. concern. Well, that happens a lot less. It, it does happen less. And that's in the purchasing policy that it's supposed to happen in advance. They're aware that, they're aware that it's supposed to happen and, and in advance. And only in the case of an emergency. Um, yeah. But the fact is, they do it. And what's it? the recourse? Like, oh, well, right, I, right, I think there's that. some confusion about, you know, if you need breaks in an emergency and it's going to cost a thousand dollars, and a thousand dollars is over the purchase order. You know, the purchasing policy doesn't require a purchase order because it was an emergency. But yet, because it's over five hundred dollars, I think they do it to try to cover all the bases. Mm -hmm. And so it might be a, like like a policy review and then clarity with the department heads with open ongoing conversation and meetings about, okay, I see you have a purchase order for that. Let's just remember that because that was an emergency, we don't really need to vote on this. And let's just void the purchase order and we'll pay the bill and it's fine. Or, or however you want to handle it that way. Just audit. Just something. I'm sorry, I'm not saying what was it? Uh, no. uh, I thought you said enforcement. Oh, no, sorry. But, uh, um, yes, I'm not going to say it doesn't happen, Ken, okay. but it's a whole lot less. Okay. It used to happen. So maybe it's a lower priority then. Um, okay. But I think um, otherwise we get most of um, the high level items that I put on this now. Good. Um, so, um, so the bidding and purchase process policy, we decided to leave that blank until we look at the policy to see if there's anything to do. I'm going to share it with you and you can see. Okay. Um, and so to, I would say um, I would like to firm up town clerk tax collector. Um, so do you feel like that's covered in across the board staffing levels? Or? Not, well, kind of. It falls under that. Um, do you want me to put a note up there under that so that it gets addressed under that? Um, we can. Or yes, we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. 
So the there is an RSA. Um, I don't know how it works for tax but the town clerk, the town clerk has to approach the select board with a candidate and say, I want this person in my deputy, and we have like thumbs up, thumbs down approval. And without that, we don't we can't just say we have a new deputy town clerk. So, so could that be a, um, could that be a one article where we um, set a requirement that they are deputies for each other? Yeah. The, the, the tax collector and the town clerk both get to decide to have a deputy or not, and they get to fire their deputy if they want. So the select board provides funding for the position if the position is to be funded, mm -hmm. but you can't say to the tax collector or the town clerk you will have a deputy, um, except to say you could put something perhaps in their um, tax collector or town clerk compensation policy, which says, you know, maybe, like I would consult an attorney about that, but you might be able to put it in that policy that you will appoint and maintain the deputy, but, but otherwise I, I mean, for years, um, they were deputies for each other, and the goal, my goal was to make that happen again. There's a limit of, of the select board's authority with that. I do know that. Okay. I do. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get the specifics, but I don't know if they were officially never deputies. Yeah, I know oh. that. They just kind of covered each other. They it was like notarized. Right. It. <coughs> it was in official. I could be wrong. I yeah. think you're right. Mm -hmm. So, from, from what I heard, it wasn't they were never sworn in. You know, it was just like they each have each other's jobs and they just covered each other's back. And, and I so think there speak. was a limit to which functions they covered for each other, too. I don't yeah. think there was, was like a full understanding of each Each one's had about 60% of each other's job. Mm -hmm. It's just inconvenient for the town, is what I'm saying. Um, you know, and people complain about that, so that's why I thought it was important. Yeah, and I, I don't want to speak, but I don't know how many appointments I handle it. Tom Clark meet to the public has a lot of comments, but I don't think tax collectors meet with I think it's about availability. People and, yeah. Okay. So, it's about availability. So we've reduced or eliminated the closure of town hall when the tax when the town clerk is out, at least. So it might be something around, like, re-engaging with the public that since that sort like, now, this is new to 2021, that that essentially, that that's a thing. So um, maybe like engaging with the public around this and maybe even other things about what's working or not working yeah. around your well, service. What is the level the of service? Right? Because okay. it's going to be reflected in your tax bill. Well, right. right. Like, so you what's not working, but also what you want that's not working. Right. Yeah. That's extra I think, uh, well, I can't speak for I haven't, I haven't seen complaints about town. Uh, Maybe you have, but I haven't seen like complaints about the town clerk, for instance. I thought there might be a few because I'm closing on six people here not work at five, might be rushing to get in. But unless you guys have heard complaints, I haven't really heard. I'm just saying. Have you heard? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in talking to people, you know. Um, they want more hours. Well, they just want more consistency, you know. Like most consistency, consistent, consistent schedule and coverage, and you know, uh, town hall hours, which are much better now because everything's open. Um, I think. But like, what? Uh, um, what do you mean by consistency? Because now that we're fully open, yeah. um, what's what is the inconsistency? So, well, let me ask you: um, Can the town for do the responsibilities of the tax collector when the tax collector? Is open? No, the tax collector is the only one who knows anything about how to do that. And that's what I'm saying. Maybe it means a deputy, you know, but Dan becomes a deputy for Andrea. Right? See, but I, I'm trying to get, I mean, I, I'm just trying to get me going on because, you know, the tax collector performs a certain thing and collecting X amount of money mm -hmm. for, uh, you know, yeah. how to keep functioning with the tax collector, with the town clerk is continuously right. for the public. I, again, I don't know, but I don't think they schedule it. Meetings and people might come in and ask the tax collector a question about this deed or this or that. It's not a. Well, it's not a. It's not. I'm just asking. Maybe I don't know, but I don't think there's like scheduled meetings that do. No, it's not. It's, it's not. It could mean a day's interest and penalties, though. You know, 
Um, if somebody walks in and wants to pay their tax bill, yeah. um, and they don't know, say, say it's late and ready, and they want to know what their interest payment is, yeah. you know, there's no one there that can provide that. that that's true. Potentially true, because if she's sick or on vacation or something, then... Or only work 16 hours a week. And only work 16 hours a week. The, the, there's, there's a void there. But, but I don't, you know, I think we could, if, if the select board wanted to, you could either offer a deputy or you could offer some staff support even for that. But um, the, you can go on the website as a member of the public or an employee to see what's your balance. Um, and the interest changes daily, so you can see right now if you want to pay your bill what, right now what's due. Um, I, I think you'd have to work with the tax collector and probably through the policy to see to say what's the expectation, and and this is what we're going to provide to help you meet that expectation. Yeah, I would think there's a lot of communication going back and forth with email when someone's paying the taxes, and I would hope someone's paying the taxes. And they late, they get cold of where the authority is to say, hey, I'm late or whatever. Right? They shouldn't be. It shouldn't be coming 30 days, you know, the tax bill is 30 days late and they're coming on day 31 and saying, hey, I don't want to have to pay interest because... No, it's an emergency. Yeah. Oh, there's exactly. plenty of unsubmitted things like that. Yeah. Um, but being busy on the last, I just wanted to get it on the list. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. People have to be a little responsible. I mean, if someone hasn't paid the taxes and all of a sudden they're coming at the last minute, no. Also, she's well, so Sal is an example about um, did you have an issue with taxes and you're concerned about it getting um, posted on time? That's correct. So there's an example of you know where right. somebody wants a service. Right. You know, it, 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 so did we find a reason someone dropped in the Dropbox and it took eight days to yeah. someone retrieve it? For it to get to the bank. So it's not really clear where is the gap or what was the holdup. Okay, so we're talking two different things. Possibly. Okay, right. Just making sure that you always got to get to the root cause. Right, you know? exactly. Okay. Um, so we have a whole bunch of, can we sort by ones now? Just yeah. so, so I just want to offer, this is 8 o'clock. Yep. Yeah. Um, I'm exhausted. Yeah. Okay. I was, um, I was going to say something too. Go ahead, finish it So I'm, um, I think this is a great start. I, I don't know how much more we want to put in tonight. But what I, I was going to propose course. is because I think when we meet between an hour and a half and two hours, say two hours, I'm going to here, is if you guys are okay with doing strategy every other Monday for a little bit, I mean, I don't want to meet every single Monday, but maybe for a little bit, like next week's a regular board meeting, and maybe the following week, do strategy. Yes. Um, so because I'm okay. I mean, I don't want to, we can go another 20 minutes, half hour, but I think we're really dropping off at a good point right here and then we pick up. Yeah. I think it's well, I think it's important to figure out how um, to decide when to meet again is how important it is to further prioritize the ones and how we're going to handle those. And when that has to happen. So does it need to happen this month? Or does it need to happen um, in August? Uh, well this month I would say no because of no way to the August I would say absolutely. Don't you? Yeah, I mean, well, some of these things are going to naturally, so budgets and CIP are going to happen, right? Like, um, there's there's nothing to be done. It will just happen. Right. Um, some of these other things we're, we're waiting on, really the road plan. So, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not, not no, it's okay. articulating properly. Um, it's a function of my mental state. But Should we, the question, I'll, I'll simplify it. Mm. Do you think it's important we meet on August 2nd? I, I, I don't have a problem with I can't meet on August 2nd. Okay. 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 You, so you two then, can certainly meet about um, um, I'm on vacation that week. So um, then let's push it out the next week. Um, yeah. Um, oh, by the way, um, next Monday I cannot meet. Okay. Um, I'm hoping um, you all can meet yep. on the 27th. Next Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought you. I thought you were going to say you're on vacation. Mm -hmm. No, no. Oh, no. do you just like we're to the 27th? Yeah. If you. Tuesday is a little. I'm okay with that. Um, with several of my colleagues are retiring. What is this? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Use it there. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Use it there. 
I believe the 27th. Okay, awesome. Um, can you make that change? I will take care of that. So and then are we planning on doing yeah, oh, okay. a second year vacation? So um, when so do we want to do another strategy? Can we wait until the 16th? Oh, I think we just. Yeah, I mean, then we're going to absolutely prioritize everything. Yeah, and we can and we can start filling in. I mean, I actually don't we can think about it. So yeah, I'm sorry. Awesome. When, are you, when are you doing this again? The 16th, so basically the month. From okay. The yep. Okay. So, so next meeting is it? Hmm. We can slow down a little bit, right? And then kind of going back to on the 16th when we have a practice session. Yep. Um, and so at that session, can we agree that we'll we'll just try to prioritize and work around the ones? Yep. Does that make sense? Ones, and I think we might get to some twos. Because yeah. A lot of these ones will, yeah. will just kind of resolve themselves. I think we should we should try to get all the ones. I think we should, um, we should be able to do that. So Main Street parking is probably going to come up as an agenda item uh, for our next meeting, which okay. is on the highway, uh, based on the feedback from them. So okay. that would naturally fall off. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like some of these things are, are operational. Maybe sure so we'll just kind of or whatever's happening. But sometimes we'll sit here until we pick them up and get them right. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Well, this is this is it was, practice. It was. I felt I felt it was beneficial. Mm -hmm. Yes. I agree. Quite a bit done in an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, is there anything else to talk about tonight? Uh, I have nothing right now. Um, um, the only thing I'm going to bring up real briefly. Mm -hmm. uh, Little concerned the rec committee that uh, Mike, who was running it, stepped out of his chair. Because he's got a lot going on. And Silla's running, which I'm not saying anything about that, but that the we'll have to talk with the, the community channel. I mean, we have three people in the meeting school. Um, so yeah, it's concerned. Yeah, we'll talk in a regular meeting about it, but okay. I can't see it throwing any up. Are we recording right now? Should be. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll talk about it. We'll talk about officially at the meeting. Okay. Just so it's official. Okay. Thanks for that heads up. Um, I did not read the minutes from last Monday yet. So I'm sorry. I was not going to leave those next yeah. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, with that. Yeah, next Tuesday. Thanks for that. Yeah. Sure. Monday. Email. Did you get my email? Um, about. Energy oh yes, it's, energy it's on this list. It's on the list. So, um, was it on there? It was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think you all gave I, it a two, in fact. Wow. Okay. We'll do all this. Yeah. No. We're gonna. And, and I think it's a great idea. To all of you, I think it's a great idea. I was on the energy committee at one point. It didn't go very far. But, um, no, I'm just kind of excited about the county. David Waters did have got some legislation passed. Ooh. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, and there's a good possibility of money, you know, making money with the solar farms. Okay. But you yeah. have to partner in with somebody else. My neighbors across the street have done in the summer. I don't know exactly the specifics. You can't even see them because you put the bank up behind the house and things move forward. They put about 30 of them in that property. And I don't know how that works if they get compensated X amount of money towards the power. But there's been a few, I mean, there's a few out, you know, there's six or seven residents in there. Huh. The only thing I've always heard was be careful put them on your roof. Yeah. You know, those panels that are up in the field and stuff, that's great, but on your roof. Yeah, I've heard that too. Okay, um, by consensus, we're adjourning. Yes. Um, okay, so we'll see you.